Hey everybody, Rosemater here. Welcome to my reaction discussion for episode 7 of season 2 of Black Lagoon. Last episode we finished Jane's story. She thankfully managed to get away safely thanks to a group effort. Uh, Dutch and Betty coming in at the last moment and Benny even being able to have his time to shine by helping to uh, retrieve Jane's, uh, her information and uh, got got a little bit of uh, of a thank you for Jane from that. Uh, it was quite fun. There was a lot of like action and stuff and some comedy as usual. But the big reveal was Etta is not who we think she was. Uh, she apparently was. I'm assuming she was a CIA agent at one point, and now she's living in a church in Ruanapar doing. Uh, you know, illegal activities. So my thing is like, are we going to get any backstory on how Etta ended up where she is from where she was? Like that was quite the reveal, but it also explains why she is so good at, uh, at killing people. Um, but yeah, it just gave like an extra layer, like this goofy character who doesn't seem to take herself or anything really seriously was once a CIA agent agent which is crazy um but now from what we saw of the preview for this episode it seems like uh we are potentially dealing with some yakuza which is very different uh from where we were before um it, it looks like they're going to japan so that's going to be interesting because like now rock is going to be kind of like the person that they're going to have to rely on since that's where he came from and i assume that uh it looked like um Revy is going to be with him, but as usual, she's just probably going to be causing problems, especially given Revy is kind of that loud, brash type of character. I don't think that's going to go down very well. Um, so I'm excited to see this. It's going to be a complete change of pace, I'm assuming, and a change of scenery from kind of like the sun, you know, the sunshine and, you know, the tropics and everything. So I'm very excited for this episode. Uh, without further ado, let's get into it. And I'll give you guys my thoughts afterwards. Fuji, Fujiyama. Oh, I've already missed it. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Okay, so he is. He's going home. And I love that now it's like, so it's been a year. So it's nice that immediately we're getting an establishment of like, this is how long he's been doing this for. And you can already see in that brief moment how much he's changed. Uh, like he's just watching a guy get cut up and just is blasé about it. Oh, he's still in contact with Jane. That's so cute. Oh, wow, they are just, like, jumping ahead. I feel like I've missed an episode or something. Aw, Revy's worried about him. Yeah, like, there's no, uh, they are not, there's no build-up just jumping right into, like, all right, we're in Japan now, it's winter time. <laughs> it's been a while since since we've seen Bella Laika. Okay, so they're setting up some grounds in Tokyo. The thing that's interesting about this is usually like when you watch an anime, right? When people speak in Japanese, there's going to be subtitles, but you're seeing it from Bella Laika's point of view because it's a very, it's a very like English centered thing with like a very international group of people. So from Bella Laika's point of view, she doesn't understand what they're saying. There's no subtitles going on. It's nice to see Rock have a more uh, upfront and like a bigger role in things.
like this is this is a thing where I feel like this actually works really well in the dub. I'm I'm interested to see actually how this would work in the sub. Right. Are they going to like set off a bomb or something? Yep. Oh, man, she's so like you forget how scary she is. I wonder how Rock is feeling about this. I mean, he knows Bella Leica is like, uh, she she could be pretty ruthless. And I imagine too, like in Japan, I imagine they probably want to keep things a little bit more on the down low. Like it's probably more subtle with their things. And she just comes and blows shit up and she's like, all right, I'm going to establish myself. This is how we do things. Now even Rock is starting to be like, oh, this isn't how we do things here. Or maybe she's going a little bit overboard even for him. It's, it's just interesting to see Revy too, like actually like clothed. <laughs> she looks cute though. She always looks cute. I like the hat. Oh yeah, I keep forgetting her name is Rebecca. It's just so strange. Oh, yeah, it must be weird for Remy, too. It's like Japan is like, there's not really a lot of guns there, is there? Oh, I see. He's getting kind of wistful, right? I wonder if he's having doubts about, like, maybe I shouldn't have left. Oh, Revy wants to know about him. That's... You know, that's what friends do. Oh, are we actually going to see Rock's family? Oh, okay. Okay, so that's probably her parents dead. Yeah. Look at Revy actually being a little bit serious, like, being like, hey, like, look at that. She's not usually like this. So, yeah, she lost her parents, obviously, at a young age, and she's just telling them, like, hey, oh, she's, it's rigged, isn't it? Oh, no, here we go. She's going to get into a fight. Oh, here we go. <laughs> I 
<laughs> and the serious moment is gone, and now uh, <laughs> now Riffy is just back to her old ways. But that was like a nice little moment where, you know, she's obviously lost her parents at a young age, and she's like, hey, uh, don't take them for granted. No, whenever someone talks, I've said this before, whenever someone talks politely like that and they're calm, they are not to be messed with, especially when they look like him. And also, if someone wears sunglasses at night, don't mess with them. Or maybe those are just regular glasses. <laughs> Or maybe she's the one. Maybe she's the one that we have to be careful with. Maybe. Maybe he's just like, uh, maybe she's the one, the, this timid girl is the one that's actually the badass. <laughs> Oh, no. I wonder if, uh, maybe he'll have a little crush on this girl. Remy's gonna get jealous. No, oh, I bet... Her father is part of the Yakuza. Maybe the father is related to this group that uh, Bella Laika is talking to. Or maybe the group that they want to uh, overtake. That's interesting. Okay, so I didn't realize that Revy was Chinese-American. That probably was brought up at some point. I just missed it. Also, she's a student, Rock. How old are you? Maybe be careful. She says that a lot, doesn't she? I wonder if, uh, what was the name, Fujiyama? Yep. Underworld figured. Of course, they're, they're going to... Oh! All right, so are these guys here... These are... Bella Laika's guys? I'd assume so. See, I'm wondering whoever those guys that they just, uh, they just assassinated or maybe related to this girl that Rock met.
Oh. God damn, she's savage. I can't remember if that was one of the guys that was at the meeting with Belvalaika. Yep, family Yakuza, right? I bet that guy that was in the preview with all with the back tattoo is probably this dude. Okay, yes, yeah, so he was. Okay, so they're on the side of Bella Laika. Yep, there he is. Oh, he sussed it out immediately who it is. Isn't that what Farfetch, the Pokemon, isn't it based on that whole thing about the joke about like a duck who brings a leek with them to be cooked in? And that's why it's far-fetched. Okay, so he's going to go visit his parents. I'm assuming anyway. Never would have thought I'd see Revy playing with kids. Uh, well, in her own way. <laughs>
And then she goes into like really detailed descriptions like this is what a dying person's like. <laughs> Oh my gosh, she's. I like she's showing kids like this is how you properly die. That's cute. She's actually embarrassed. Aww. All right, well, an interesting first uh, part of this, anyway. It's a little bit hard to keep track of, like, okay, so you've got the Yakuza, you've got, like, okay, this one guy, what was his name? I've already forgotten, the, the big buff guy. So he wants to do things legit. It seems like he's kind of the bodyguard of, it seems like the daughter, I'm assuming, of his old boss that died. And then you've got this other guy who wants to do things more violently, and that's why he's enlisted Bella Laika. But the other guy doesn't agree with it. He's He wants to kind of, I guess, go clean. That's why he's like a, a vendor, is he doesn't want to deal with, they said, like prostitution and drugs. But it's the whole thing about like, we need you to just do one final job. So I'm assuming at some point we're going to get a confrontation between this, uh, this guy and uh, maybe Revy. And also the fact he was asking, like, oh, uh, I'm assuming she came with an interpreter. What was he like? So he probably sussed it out pretty quickly that he's met them. So I'm, maybe he's going to try and find Rock and, I don't know, maybe try and have Rock convince Bella Laika to not go and kill people like this. I don't know. It's a uh, potential powder keg for something to blow up. And also Revy just feels like a lit match being thrown in. because She's just so her you know the succession all right and the thing too about the succession i'm guessing that uh this daughter i'm assuming she's the daughter is going to be like the successor but does she want to be maybe they don't respect her because she's a daughter uh Maybe she'll even be, I said before, but like, maybe she's the one to watch out for in a way. And, and she is like, maybe she's not physically intimidating like her bodyguard is, but she is, if I'm assuming the heir of this family, then might not be good to mess with her. Uh, and then you've got Rock just kind of like, he seems to be wavering a little bit on maybe whether he wants to come back home or not. He seems to be pretty taken with it, though. Like, we saw at the beginning that he seemed very blasé about just watching someone get cut up on the streets. Uh, Revy said, like, this this is the life that Rock should have. Maybe she's feeling a little bit of guilt that they took him away from his normal life. And no matter how much he says that he is happier this way, I don't know if she believes him. Uh, and then Bella Laika just uh, even being a little bit too much even for Rock. Like, Rock knows that she is capable of this, but maybe seeing it firsthand. Because the thing is, like, when he's dealt with Bella Laika, it's never really been face-to-face -face like that. They've usually talked over the phone, and he knows what she's capable of, but maybe seeing it, like, in his hometown, uh, it maybe it hits a little bit more close to home. Like, just knowing it, it doesn't mesh, like, the way that the Yakuza works. I don't imagine that they go in guns blazing blowing stuff up like they they're probably a little bit more subtle about it i'm guessing so 
it's, it's just a lot to take in. It was a really interesting episode, just like Rock dealing with maybe what he wants to do with his future. Does he want to stay back home? Maybe he wants to take Revy's words to heart about, um, you know, talking to his family again. It seems like there's no real big drama with his family. It's just a matter of like, you've got the golden child, the son, the older son, who is uh, the successful one. And then he's kind of like the screw up. And they just don't really talk to him. Like They're not close, but it doesn't seem like there's anything really dramatic going on. Uh, but yeah, it was actually like Revy had some really good moments here, like her playing around with the kids and getting embarrassed, uh, getting to just goof off a little bit. Uh, her talking to Rock about like seriously about, um, you know, maybe you should go see your family because you never know when you might die or they might die and maybe you'll regret it. And then the flashback to her when she was younger uh, seeing her parents dead, I'm assuming. Uh, so Revy actually, other than her just threatening random people on the streets, she was surprisingly mature in this episode. And it seems like she really is like trying to think of what's best for Rock. And it's really cool to see the progression of the relationship where it started versus now. I think when she says he's not like this isn't what he should be doing, I think maybe she doesn't want him to get hurt. I think it's coming from a, a place of friendship, of being like, we brought you into this world that is just, this isn't what you should be doing. And I think maybe being in Japan and seeing how much more civilized it is than Roanapur and just being like, this is where he should be. And we took him away from this and we put him in danger. Uh, yeah, I, I really liked it. I, it's like, there's a lot of setup here, this whole thing about this, uh, the inner turmoil of this Yakuza family uh, of rock being at home and having maybe second thoughts or having conflicted feelings uh, of Revy trying to push him maybe to think about things and patching things up with his family, maybe living a normal life. And Bella Laika just going crazy and uh, <laughs> just it it's a lot to take in, but it was very interesting. I, I think this is one of the more interesting setup ones I've seen in a while. Uh, so I, I'm very invested in how the story is going to shape up and uh, to see like all of these uh, forces coming together. You got the Yakuza, you got Bella Laika, Rock and Revy. And uh, yeah, just and also it's just really cute. Just that little teeny tiny moment with Benny where it's like she he he still seems to be chatting with uh, with Jane. I think that's really cute. I like that. We had that little moment there. So overall, I really like this episode and I'm excited to see how the setup is going to pay off in the uh, later episodes. I hope it's going to be like at least a three parter because I feel like there's a lot uh, focusing on Rock, especially like he's kind of he's sort of our protagonist, but Revy seems to be the one who they focus on a lot. So it's nice to see like Rock kind of get some screen time and get some character development. And I I want to see more of that. So I really like this episode and uh, I'm excited for the uh, the future one. So I hope you guys enjoyed it, too. Thank you so much for watching and uh, stay tuned next week for episode nine. Until then. Shoutouts to my top tier patrons Salieri, Revealing Storm, Amlife, Icognito, Saturn Sins, Doublus91, Harry Gazip, Kenju Storm, and Linz VA.